Hello, ladies and gents. I just realized I have a ton of bloom behind me, so let's cut some of that off. There we go. So, um, let's see. For those who are joining us who have never seen this before, uh, I'm making a first-person uh, dungeon crawl game. Not really sure uh, kind of how far we're going to get today, but we're going to chug along, make some progress, do good things. Um, specifically, the biggest thing today is that uh, right now the party is this kind of weird setup. It doesn't have any information in it. We need to do what is essentially what amounts to some data entry to ensure that, uh, and not just data entry, it's hopefully going to be more interesting than that, but also some processing in order to show off what our party is going to be made up of so that we can have stats and names. And yes, I'd like my line endings to be the same. Thank you, Visual Studio. Um, I don't know why I'm putting headphones in. I've got no sound. I just don't have any. It's just how it goes for me. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the big thing I want to start in on today. You'll note the party right now has an update, and that's about it. So we can move, and that's all that really kicks in. Um, one thing I actually do want to do while I'm thinking about it. Um, uh, we're just going to put in this little movement enabled flag and say, hey, if movement's enabled, then you can actually do the movement code. Uh, otherwise, it'd be kind of silly. We'd never be able to turn it off without turning the entire party off. So movement enabled, uh, great. So now we need to just make sure that this is on in our actual script. And that's set. Cool. Little thing out of the way already. Um, let's see. So stats. This is something that uh, Unity is notoriously bad at is storing statistics for something that don't have a view object in the world. For example, we have a party of, say, four characters. And I say I pull four out of thin air, so that may or may not be the final tally. But we pull four characters out, and we say, where does this information go? Well, the party is one object. It doesn't really have player objects attached to it. Sure, we could make a player object, or a character object, I should say, not player, character. Um, and we could attach four of them to the same object. But then how do you differentiate them? How do you check them for information? Every time you'd ask for a certain character, you'd have to grab all four and then proceed to do manipulations on it, which wouldn't be the best way to handle it. Um, at least... Off the top of my head, that might not be the best way to handle it. I'm not actually certain if that's a terrible thing. I'm still trying to feel my way around how Unity uh, requires its data to be organized. But it, it essentially comes down to the fact that anything that has data attached to it has to have probably a mono behavior somewhere that manages all that information. For the sake of going with Unity's theme of how we're supposed to command data from one place to another, I actually am going to go so far as to make a script that is a player character. Um, yes, I know it's been modified. Sheesh. Uh, and I always just kind of get rid of all the crap that's in the template. I honestly should just change the template, but that's one of those things that requires me to remember to change the template. And then I just forget about it and end up with back where I started. So, information. Um, the most basic information that is going to be in any of these, um, we're going to want to have a name. We're probably going to want some kind of uh, texture that's going to be the portrait. I don't know if that actually should be how I store it, so I'm going to leave that commented out at the moment. Uh, let's see, we've got name. Uh, I could go in and put all the stats in. Uh, that's a lot of stats, but I could do it. Um, let's see here. I've got... So I actually homebrewed up a role-playing game system just to use 
in here. So we'll see how this goes. But we've got our strength. We've got coordination. And we've got endurance. And then we've got knowledge, reasoning, resolve, allure. Whoop. What are you doing? Come Visual Studio, Charisma, and Composure. And I don't know how many of these are going to survive till the final round, but this is what I've got so far. It essentially breaks down into three sets of stats. So we've got our physical stats, we've got our mental stats. Yeah, I know, right? For somebody who programs for a living, you'd think I'd be able to type better. Um, and I'll call these social stats. The number of times I have to go back and backspace, like, yeah, I type quickly, but it, I just make so many errors, I have to keep going back. I can't tell you if you guys are being completely sarcastic or not. <laughs> um, all right, so I've got physical, mental, social stats, and then each of the uh, categories breaks down into what is essentially... Uh, power, control, Whoop. and see now that you guys have got me thinking about my typing, I'm making all kinds of mistakes all over the place. This is hilarious. Um, power, control, and what was my third one? Resilience. Don't think that's typed correctly. Is that how I spell that? That is how I spell that. Good. So yeah, power, control, resilience. And those those three stats make their way down for each section. Um, now this might be a little overboard, but we need to start encoding all this information into a single player. Um, <laughs> yeah, you guys can hear my keyboard. Like I got a, the upside of having a really nice microphone is you guys can hear me. The downside is you can also hear every time I hit my keys. Uh, and the sad thing is I don't have a mechanical keyboard. I just type really loudly on a fairly cheap keyboard. Um, oh well, how it goes. Uh, we've got, eh, I'll leave luck in for now. Um, I think that's really all the stats I want to start with. Um, Brian, I do some, I, I don't really do video tutorials, so to speak. Uh, most of my games, I do sit here and talk just about this much. So... Hopefully that's helpful and makes you want to tune in more often, but um, you'll find my YouTube channel, which is linked below, has um, pretty much all of my development work, and uh, you'll find that I do tend to just kind of talk a lot, uh, partially because it helps me parse what uh, I should be doing with my fingers with all this typing, and partially because it also helps me understand if I'm doing something incredibly stupid and I say it out loud, I kind of get that feeling of doing something stupid. Um, so let's see. Uh, so we've got our stats. Uh, we need to figure out, now that we've got stats, A, how we want to load and save characters in. Because I need some way, as a developer, to load characters into place. Uh, now for anyone who's seen me work before, you guys know that I have a thing for JSON. Um, I'll leave it at the word thing because I, I just really like JSON. Um, but let's see here. I'm trying to think of an easy way I can have like a load character or something like that. So I don't have to keep recreating characters every single time because that's the other part. Um, when I set this information, there should be some way for me to just like, I don't know. It'd be nice if I could have a text asset which is my default um, stats, or default character, I should say. That way, if I'm testing something, I don't have to go through all the menus and say, create character, do this, save game. I can just have a default character, and he's what gets loaded, he or she is what gets loaded in. Ooh, there we go, there's a good detail. Um, bool, no. Um, I'm gonna say int as a gender for now. I need to, hmm, I need to think about this actually. 
I'm going to leave it in, but also comment that out because that is a big piece of information that I would love to have, but I'm unsure how I want to do that. So I could have an enumeration. Uh, I could have, hmm, I need to think about that because some of the races in this world that I've generated, um, some of them have non-standard gender roles. You know, obviously humans are going to be the most basic, simple gender female or gender male for the most part, um, but some of them are not quite so simple. And so uh, for those races who have more dynamic uh, gender roles, I'm going to have to think about how I represent that n numerically inside the system. Um, either way, uh, I don't need to make that public because it's a unity function. Do I have my usual? No, it looks like I haven't been keeping up with my standards. Allow me a moment to just generate some header information. I do this a lot, um, mostly because it helps me break apart my code into pieces. Uh, that looks like the middle. There we go. Uh, I like to do this just to keep my code kind of straightforward. If you're reading it, you'll understand, oh, OK, here's something that only is called by unity. Here's something that's called as a helper function. And then here are things that are called as uh, loading and public functions and things that anyone can access. Uh, for example, if I make a load character uh, call, that would exist as its own, not as a unity function, but as a public function. Um, and so that would be something anyone can access. Um, I'll just leave the header here for now, just in case. But uh, we're going to say default. Cool. I could just load the bytes in. And I don't think I have my favorite standard JSON library loaded in yet. So I'm actually going to have, um, let's see here, where is it? Uh, I may have accidentally deleted it from my standard setup. So let's just grab a copy of it from somewhere else. Um, Omnius, I, so I bounce back and forth. I'll have days with tons of viewers, and then I'll have days like today, which are a little quieter. And I kind of go back and forth. Um, unfortunately, because I don't have a standard time, it makes it very difficult for people to tune in. So I've got a lot of followers. I'm actually pushing to see if I can cross that 1,000 follower barrier. But at the same time, it's difficult because I'm not regular enough in my schedule for people to tune in on a regular basis. Um, I would say that if you're looking to catch me on a regular basis, just last week, I started doing morning streams. I do an hour before I go to work. I just sit here and work on my code and work on this game and I usually only get like half a dozen to a dozen people at once. I was actually amazed because on Friday I think we pulled in 35 viewers which is a new kind of top score for my morning sessions but uh, we'll see. Hopefully we'll see if we can drag more people in at least for the weekends but yeah the hour sessions in the morning have been working really well for me because I'm not burnt out after work. Because as a game developer during the day, it makes it kind of hard to come home sometimes and say, you know what I feel like doing? More programming. Oh, uh, crud. Did I really? <laughs> I need to, uh, I need to figure out where I put that. <laughs> I like this JSON. Uh, I put this JSON library somewhere. And I'd love to, probably, I need to make a copy of it somewhere so that I can't lose it. Uh, I spent a lot of time finding the one that, uh, finding one I like and then modifying it so that it fits my needs. And now it's like, oh, well, now that it fits my needs, I need to not lose it. Hey, Dakarki. Yeah, I know. Weirdos would follow me. It's uh, being crazy. It definitely has its uh, advantages and disadvantages. Here we go, assets, scripts. Really? I thought I had a JSON parser in here somewhere. <laughs> uh, crap. Crap, crap, crap. 
There's only a game scene in assets there. That's not going to help. Really? <laughs> Did I just... Ugh. Uh, Omnius, I am on... Well, I'm in California. I am dead center of Silicon Valley, California, which means uh, Pacific Standard Time. So I know it's kind of hard to see the little clock in the corner. Can I bring that up? There we go. Five o'clock. 5 p.m. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I have moments like that, too. Uh, so, let's see here. I could have sworn in one of my projects I had this JSON library. And I'm going to be really sad if I lost it. Um, do I not have a copy of this anywhere? <laughs> I might not. And I am going to laugh and laugh. Oh, wait, no. Here it is. I think I've got a copy of it in here. I have to have a copy of it in here. There we go, JSON library. Thank goodness I have a copy of it somewhere uh, <laughs> or else I would lose my mind. All right, assets, scripts, JSON. Thank goodness we've got it. Yes, yes, reload everything and sure. Okay, one sec, this is bothering the heck out of me. I don't think it's using standard line endings here, and I can't tell you why, but it keeps wanting to change my line. You know what? I'll fight with it later. Um, <laughs> all right, basic JSON library. Cool. Um, namespace JSON. I just need to remember that that using should be in here. Uh, using JSON. So what I tend to do is I tend to put my uh, my engine and system includes up top and then my custom includes underneath. So you'll note, here's my engine and system and then here's my custom. Uh, and we have a JSON object and this will be our character object. And we just parse straight in from our default character text file and that should be like the easiest part of this now from here we have to start doing a little bit of hard work a little data processing so for now I'm actually gonna rip out some of these stats or I'm just gonna comment them out until I start making use of things um, I don't need luck for now I'm actually I should comment these things out I really shouldn't delete things because I tend to lose things I delete as you guys just noticed galactic glum can I play my game yeah but there's it's not terribly interesting I mean this is what my play field looks like the only reason there's a grid there is because I did that myself um, hey I can walk around like it's it's a start but obviously a lot of work needs to be done I literally started this uh, like I think on Friday was my first like day of work on this um, maybe Thursday I don't I know I haven't put any of the videos up on YouTube yet so we'll get there um, character object dot uh, get number this is the one thing about JSON that I don't like because it's JavaScript based uh, JSON has no idea of what an integer is it just says numbers. Numbers are 32, or sorry, they're not 32. They're 64-bit numbers. They're doubles, essentially. Um, and so what I think I want to do is I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make a quick adjustment to get number. Uh, I'll have the standard get number call, but I'm also going to toss in a templated version. Uh, and I have to remember how to template things, but what I essentially want to do um, there we go uh, and I don't want to log errors so to speak that seems kind of messy uh, value equals get value key that's a JSON value if the value is null uh, I guess I can't just call this default, can I? Because that looks like it's causing uh, errors. We'll just call it default value. Because default is a keyword in C-sharp. We have to keep that in mind. Um, 
and then we're just going to cast it to T. And that might cause us some trouble later. Cannot convert type double to T. How do you know that, though? How can you know? Um, interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Is there some way to, like, convert doubles downwards? I know there's a lot. Uh, converter. That might actually be my friend. Let's see here. Uh, change type. <laughs> this looks like you have to specifically know what you're working towards. And unfortunately, that doesn't really look like that's what, uh, that's going to be something that helps me out here. Um, Can I do that? No, it's still going to complain, even though it doesn't know what T is. Am I doing this right? Am I doing this template function right? <laughs> Got to make sure. Um, swap T, da, 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 da. Yeah, no, that looks correct. That looks perfectly fine. I'm totally writing this function correctly. Um, it is unsure about whether it can convert this type double to T. Um, Let's see here, convert type, uh, sorry, I should pull this over so you guys can see it. Um, specifically, I shouldn't say type, I, let's convert number, uh, just because I wanna make sure that this is, okay, this is the way we do this. Interesting, there's a convert value. Oh, uh, okay, so he's using convert.change type. Luckily, I think we have access to the convert class in its entirety inside Unity. Let's hope we do. I'm just going to paste what they did. OK, type of T. Got it. So T, type of T. Cool. Uh, no, not cool. What? Oh. We can't call it name because model behavior has a name. So we can't exactly just overwrite things without it getting unhappy on us. Uh, the key will be strength and the default value will be two. So if you don't have strength in your file, I'm just going to give minimums. So if anything goes terribly, frighteningly wrong, I'm just going to start throwing minimums. Also, the other thing I'm kind of tempted to do because it's an RPG system. It does have its minimums and maximums. I'm tempted to put a range value into these, but I think I'm going to hold off for now. Uh, let's see here. So we have strength, coordination. And we're just going to kind of break into it like this. And while I do this data entry, uh, I see people are asking questions. Uh, Galactic Glum asks, is this multiplayer? Uh -uh. I'm actually actively avoiding multiplayer because those can be a really big project. And for one person to work on a project in their free time the way I am on this, uh, I don't want to fight with uh, a lot of... don't want to fight with a lot of networking packet bugs. I'm just... it's not something I want to spend my time on, as interesting as that topic can be. It's really not something uh, I want to do at this moment. I want to make something. I want to finish something. And this is the best way to do it is single player, simple, easy game. Um, I usually have a big love for anything that's procedural. And while part of me is screaming that parts of this game should be procedural, I don't want to really dive into that yet because that in itself can be a really big undertaking. Uh, as anyone who watched my previous streams on making an RTS is about, uh, you'll find that uh, as much fun as it was to work on something procedural, I had procedural terrain as part of the system, uh, it also took up a lot of my time uh, to continue to work on that part of the system. If something went wrong, it's difficult to debug, and it's also incredibly difficult to uh, ensure that it makes something that is playable for our, all people. Um, 
there are a lot of secrets in the game industry when it comes to using procedural content and uh, a lot of them involve cheap hacks and things to kind of just make sure that the game keeps running. Let's see, what else do we got? Uh, is there a picture or something of the game so I can look at the art style? I don't really have art style nailed down. I have some assets that I've purchased here and there, but uh, I don't really have anything um, kind of laid down like this yet. I don't have any big decisions made when it comes to uh, what I, how I want things to look. So the best thing I can come up with to tell you in terms of how I want this to look, um, I don't know many examples, which is part of why I like this. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up. Here, here's a good example. Uh, something without line art. I'm trying to avoid line art if I can. So you'll note that this doesn't have any hard lines except for where the color change is. And that in many places, the line art actually comes from shadowing and color change. So his lips here have some coloring to them, but the hard lines on the edges are for the most part shadows. Uh, the same thing about if you look at his ear, the change between outer ear and inner ear is not actually a line, but it's just a difference in color. And that is a style I have fallen in love with recently. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep something like this for a long term, but I definitely would love to have something like this to start with. Um, so I'm trying to kind of figure out where I want this to be, but uh, that style is something I've really come to like recently, and if I can replicate it or do it in my own artwork, which this stream at some point will, uh, I'll bounce probably at some point between game development and maybe the creative channel if I have to sit down and spend time uh, making uh, art assets for my game. Ooh, let's get these out of here. Uh, but I would definitely think that that would be something I need to work on and spend time on. Um, and that would be maybe something fun to do on stream. I actually don't know. I, I don't draw terribly well, so uh, I don't know if I want to put you guys through that ordeal. Um, am I still working on that 3D RTS game, or is that a lost cause? Unfortunately, the 3D RTS game is something of a lost cause, mostly because uh, it was a project specifically made for a lot of, and I, I say a lot of people, for more than just me. Uh, it was a project whose main, I don't actually, I shouldn't call this text. Text is a bad name. Sorry, I keep bouncing around, but uh, we'll call it data because that's really what this is. This is gonna be just like sheer lots of information. And they don't have, a, okay, I apparently can't create text files using Unity. I have to actually go out to the folder. That's fine. Um, let's get this assets data, yeah. Um, I'll call this default warrior. And I like .json endings. It tells you what is uh, kind of inside the file. Uh, and we'll have to figure out, we've got, actually, I won't do copies quite yet. Not yet. Unity, cool. You understand it's a text file. I can appreciate that. Interesting, okay. Anyway, where was I? Um, so yeah, it's just, it was a bigger project than something I could work on on my own, and I never would have finished it uh, on my own, as is. So I unfortunately kind of tossed that off to the side. Um, Omnius is asking, what's the difference between C Sharp and C++? Uh, age, mostly. Age and engineering. Um, ooh, name should be in here too, shouldn't it? Yeah, it should. Let's get these out of here. Uh, name character name there we go is there a default on this no there isn't so that's just going to complain if name doesn't exist that's fine um, yeah so the major differences between c sharp and c plus uh, c sharp has a memory manager 
is uh, single inheritance instead of multiple inheritance, and they make up for that by adding interfaces into the system. And uh, the other thing that I like is that threading is a, uh, a native thing for C Sharp. Now granted, I don't get that power in Unity, but I don't have to pull a lot of libraries in if I code in pure C Sharp in order to do multi-threading, which is something that I could really, really come to appreciate were I to work on something where threading is a, um, a feasible major part of the project. Um, I'll come up with a better name later, or if you guys want to name him in chat, feel free, toss out a name for him, and we can name whatever the default warrior character is going to be. For now, I just kind of want to toss out a couple quick ones. I'll probably have a default warrior, mage, uh, cleric, and thief? I don't know. I'm trying to think of like four incredibly stereotypical characters right now because I don't really want to put a ton of thought into, oh, well, maybe he'll look like this or no, don't care. These are going to be something that are player generated eventually. So I don't even want to be spending time on this except to, um, that shouldn't be a string. I don't want to really spend time on this except to have somebody that uh, has stats that are somewhat meaningful. Um, and I now need to remember those stats that I just went for. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of my, yeah, we'll make his coordination a little lower. So yeah, that's kind of the major differences between C Sharp and C++. Uh, there are a lot others, lot of others, there we go. Uh, especially when you talk about ecosystem, uh, Microsoft versus open source versus uh, all kinds of other stuff. But I'm not gonna dive into that because the differences are um, very, very vast when you come down to it. The two are very different languages. Um, yeah, my ability to talk about one thing and code another uh, kind of comes from uh, working at a place where I had to usually multitask. I would try and keep my attention on uh, one piece of information while talking to a coworker about something else that they needed a hand with. Um, just kind of it kind of happens it works out well um, he's a warrior so he's got garbage for mental stats and that's fine um, we'll make his resolve a little better just because he's a warrior um, have I ever hit the balmer peak I definitely have coded while well intoxicated before um, I don't know if I'd say I hit the balmer peak I kind of think I went over it honestly um, yeah, I kind of went head first over it, in fact. Uh, I know I remember looking at the code afterwards and wondering what the hell I was thinking. Um, let's see, reasoning, resolve, allure. There we go. I'm on my, uh, I'm on my social stats. And he's going to be, <laughs> he's a warrior, so he'll be good looking, but his charisma is going to be garbage. And his, what did I call it, composure? Yeah. His composure is not going to be too great either. In fact, I'll make it even worse than his charisma. He'll get angry easily. Uh, there we go. Is that all I've got? Da, 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 da. Yeah, cool. Um, I should really figure out a way to do portrait. But I think I'll save that for another time. Is there any benefit to using C Sharp rather than Java in Unity? Uh, my So Whiteland asks a really good question that I haven't run into before. Uh, the benefit for me, besides knowing C Sharp terribly well, is that uh, C Sharp is a, uh, it's a statically typed language. So when I type integer, the compiler knows exactly what I'm talking about. It means I'm talking about a 32-bit non-decimal number versus if I type float or uh, string, these are all different native objects. Uh, JavaScript has a very loose idea of how a variable should work. And even though uh, that can be helpful sometimes, it also can be really to your detriment. Uh, I like to have things statically typed because it makes the compiler double check things for me. So it says, oh, you have an integer here, but you're trying to store a string to it. That that can't be right. And normally where a bug would show up before, 
uh, I now, you know, the compiler may have just caught this and saved me the pain. And so I like having a language where the compiler is a strong component that helps me as a tool program better so that in times when I make typos or in times when I cause trouble with the code, the compiler's there to say, ah, ah, no, back in line. You, you missed this, you forgot a semicolon, you didn't put the right parentheses, your indexing is wrong. Those are things that the compiler can help me with. Uh, is this still the command line thing? No, command line was not terribly fun to stream. I may continue working on it off stream, but honestly, that much data entry and uh, just pure textual uh, under the hood work was not interesting and it was not something I thought that you guys as an audience would appreciate seeing. There's no visual uh, element and so um, that's not really something I wanted to uh, to put you guys through so to speak. And did I completely miss a question like or a piece of that question rather than Java in unity can you use Java in unity I know you can use JavaScript and I know you can use boo but I don't think you can use Java in unity I'm not really sure I'll, I'll let you guys double check that but I don't think you can use Java in unity uh, in asking what do I think of Java, uh, that's a tirade I could spend a lot of time going over. Uh, Java is definitely, um, it's an interesting language, it has its quirks. Like many tools, it was great back in the day uh, when writing applets for web pages was a big helpful thing to have, but at this point uh, I'm not a huge fan of it anymore. Uh, it's kind of fallen out of usefulness, except in situations of places like Google where they need their code to be portable between multiple platforms without any extra work. And that's kind of where Java still continues to shine. So it definitely has its uses. Uh, let's see here. So we have our party. And I'm just going to slap a bunch of these scripts on here. Um, because you can have, in, in some cases, you can have more than one of a certain type of script attached to um, uh, attached to an object. And I just realized, why did, <sighs> wow, okay, I had a dumb moment. I had a really dumb moment. I completely forgot about the fact that information gets serialized into a Unity scene. And so um, I can do something like this instead of actually needing to, uh, <laughs> wow, boy, do I feel dumb. I took all this time to encode information in a JavaScript object or yeah, into a, a JSON object only to find that uh, I didn't really need to do that. In fact, it was a monumental waste of time. Uh, let's see, here we go, eight. Uh, and 6 and 10 and then uh, I think I had 8 no not 81 8 uh, 6 and 5 something like that and just to make sure I do it right in here let's just tack ranges onto all of these uh, so we're going range from 2 I think 18 is my maximum range I actually need to pull up my Google Doc on this because I have game design, uh, homebrew RPG system. There we go. Let's get the sucker in here. Uh, weaponry, racing classes, main stats. Uh, no less than two, no more than 12. Really? Is that what my table shows? OK. I. Da -da 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 -da. No less than two more than, really 12 is a, is that a, just starting? Is that what I was talking about? Because I feel like my stats should be able to go higher than 12 as a starting point. Um, and I keep, 
players can have in a single stat when the game begins. Okay, so I'm saying that you shouldn't have more than 12 in a player character that has just started, just in case I want to increase stats later, because obviously you shouldn't have a player who starts a game with a character who is so maxed out that from the beginning of the game, he won't be able to add more points to that stat. Like, that's stupid. It would be very poor design of mine to, yeah, okay, stats can go up to 18 in max. So I'm actually just gonna say 18 is the range, even though to start with, they technically should not be able to go above that. This is kind of the uglier part of doing all of this metadata addition. You note how it spreads out my stats. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, but at the same time, you can do some really cool stuff like say, let's create a header with um, primary stats as the header information. And then when I tab over to Unity, each of these characters you note, okay, they have a primary stats section and they have bars that say, here's how good their stats are. Uh, and this will keep me from kind of pushing things out of ranges that they shouldn't actually be in otherwise. Um, okay, cool. I think I actually finally got through all the questions. Uh, IMDD makes a really good point. While C Sharp uh, has native threading support, uh, and Unity doesn't support that native threading, they do have something called coroutines, which are kind of pseudo threads. They live on the uh, the main thread. They still do their work on the main thread but it allows you to uh, run things in a nonlinear fashion, much like a thread would. So you, we at least still have the tools to get away with a lot of stuff of that sort. Uh, so let's see, warrior rogue, who's better than average, and then coordination is gonna be the one that's off the charts. Endurance, not so great. Knowledge should be actually pretty, pretty good. I'll, I'll go with 14. Uh, reasoning will also keep fairly high, um, eh, less of a fairly high though, uh, definitely not a lot of resolve, uh, dashing rogue, you can be kind of good looking, right, um, charisma, being able to talk your way out of things, and composure, eh, okay, I'm making him really average in some spots, and I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of that, but, uh, whatever oh i can these are default characters they don't actually need to be spot on these are just for my testing purposes and i'm removing the default character text asset because we don't actually need to load that in uh, of course that does cause all this hard work of mine uh to at least need to be you know what what i'm gonna do Uh, there we go. I'm just going to shift this because I don't want to delete it. A, because it's a decent chunk of text that I'd like to keep, and B, because I will have to load in character stats at some point. So being able to load, uh, load character stats as a public function is great. So I want to keep that. Uh, Nilo, uh, no, you can't use system.threads inside of Unity. If you try and reference it, I'm pretty sure it'll let you, uh, it'll let you write the code in Visual Studio, but the moment you go to the, uh, Unity compiler, because Unity has a separate compiler than the Visual Studio compiler, and the Unity compiler will not have references to system.threading. Uh, difference between Resolve and Composure, uh, so... For now, resolve is a mental fortitude, while composure is a social fortitude. Uh, think of it as the difference between being mentally attacked by a spell versus being verbally assaulted by someone else uh, in the room who's having a conversation with you. Because I would love, one of the big downsides of pretty much any RPG is that there is no combat system for an argument or a debate of any kind. Uh, they just kind of throw it to the wind and say, ah, we'll have a conversation tree. And the conversation tree doesn't really, it doesn't do the kind of verbal combat that you can pull off um, 
in some games. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to keep it in the long term, but for now, it also makes sense to have my three sets of three stats. So each of them has a power, a, uh, a control, and a resilience. And social resilience is pretty good. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I'm not using standard D&D terms. I, this is, like I said, this is a homebrew system. Uh, I've got all my mechanics here. I've got my combat actions, uh, game details, how I want it to run, uh, my magic system. I'm, I'm won't say stealing, but I'm being inspired by um, the Mistborn series written by Brandon Sanderson, and so um, having a mineral table because mineral is what fuels magic in this world uh, is something that I definitely really like uh, in terms of being able to generate interesting magic systems. Alright, so player character is kind of set. Uh, I need to put in the rest of the data just so I have information. Let's see, we've got warrior, I've got a rogue, let's just go with a cleric because we all need healers. Who's, uh, we'll make his his strength will be middling, coordination will be worse, endurance will be decent. Uh, bump. Just kind of throwing things in here because for the most part, I'm not terribly interested in making these like accurate for an end game. I just kind of want to have something in here that's uh, meaningful for now. There we go, something like that. So now we've got some characters, great. Uh, now that the information lives in the system somewhere, we now have to have a way to display it. Otherwise, a lot of this becomes kind of meaningless. Um, also, we have to do a lot of the derived stats. Luckily, derived stats are really, really easy, uh, mostly because there's no data information for it to hold somewhere. Derived stats can always be recomputed at any given time. So unlike your primary stats, you don't actually get to buy or have um, the, the derived stats kind of exist in a, a different realm. Let's see here. Uh, so I actually don't even think I want a header for these because most of these, while they're public, they're not actually going to show up in the main system. mostly because I like to use uh, a lot of properties for things like this. Um, let's see, derived stats. I have the actual, I'm gonna put the homebrew RPG on my second monitor, so just for a moment so I can see it while I continue to throw code around, mostly because uh, I've got a lot of things on two different screens. I want to try and keep chat on the screen and then try and also keep uh, <laughs> my information. Ah, that's not really working though. Can I do this? No, not as easily. Hmm, I'll have to figure out some. I need a third monitor. No, I don't. I actually really don't. Uh, Death Cobra, I am in California. So for me, it's about 5.30. Even in this time of fall, it's still somewhat bright currently. It's at least bright enough that I can still code and feel like I'm not missing out on much because the outdoors is all right at best. So we have health, uh, and I'm going to call this maximum health. And it turns out I do actually want a header because there is some information now that I think about it in here that I will care about. And eventually I may want to make this a little more in depth than it currently is, but endurance times two, 
plus, oh, I don't have a base health. Um, I actually don't know what I want base health to be. Uh, this should probably be a constant. And you can probably also hear my dog banging around underneath my computer. He's trying to move about behind it. Gosh knows for what reason. Um, we'll just make base health 10. I'll make it 8 because I'm feeling a little vindictive. If characters start dying too fast, we might have to turn that up. This is endurance times resolve. That can be pretty punishing as well. <laughs> I'm looking at each of these as I type them in and kind of going, really? That's what I thought would be good? Okay. Dog. I don't want him to start barking. One sec. All right, that might have been that might have diffused the dog. We'll see. We will see. Okay, or not. My dog's just gonna leave me be. I call, I make noises, and then suddenly he just walks away. All right. So would a paladin have a lot of composure? Yeah. So I would think of somebody as some like a noble would have a higher composure. So uh, if you're uh, like someone from the aristocracy or if you are a scholar or um, I'm trying to think of like classes a cleric might have a higher composure a um, somebody who's a, a little less easy to socially shove about um, somebody who's quick to anger you might call that a low composure so to speak um, I don't know I'm trying to I'm, I'm still fiddling with the the RPG system as I come out with it um, let's see here. What else do I have? Um, do I really need all of these right now? No, I don't need dodge. Um, but I do. Yeah, I'll call it current health. Um, I have current energy. Energy. There we go. Words. Uh, perception initiative actions per turn yeah that should be good enough for now that should be good enough that we can at least slap down some UI and show off the information and we'll see if we can go from there I have a TR6 hell yes I do it's my favorite thing when I'm not on stream I'm usually poking at my car um, especially because recently I put new carburetors or I, I had help putting new carburetors onto it and the new carburetors required a lot of tuning uh, let's see here. Can I pull up a picture real quick? I might be able to. Might. And I say real quick alike because uh, I don't actually know if the specific picture in mind is on a like accessible place for people to see. I'm trying to come up with like a link real quick, but it is also difficult to just flip through pictures on Facebook because. It just is. It really, really is. I don't have any kind of uh, sorting set up on my Facebook stuff. And so, uh, hey, let's get that off my screen. Um, Okie dokie. Oh, here we go. Uh, oh, and it's marked public already. Great. Let's grab a link to that picture. Yeah, all right, cool, that works. Yeah, I have a TR6, there we go. Picture of dog in car, if you guys can see it. I hope you guys can see that. I posted a link in chat just for kicks. But yeah, it's a fun car. It takes a lot of time to get used to, but uh, that's not so bad, honestly. So the other piece of information I really want to get in here is that I'm going to set the current health to my max health on start. Current energy is my max energy. And energy is kind of, uh, I'm taking a, uh, a stamina system or a stamina approach 
and the idea is essentially that as you fight your characters will get tired and if you fight long enough without sleeping or resting of any kind your character will just straight up pass out mid fight you could have somebody who's got no energy left and they just like face plant into the floor and now the enemies get to wail on them for free because surprise surprise they're unconscious but they're not dying unconscious they're a different unconscious glad you guys can see the picture really system.threading worked now i'm really curious so if i tack system.threading here and i hop into unity Really? It doesn't care? Okay. It doesn't... It, granted. Uh, I need to give it a parameterized thread start. That's fine. I'll just call start. Funny. So it compiles there. T is assigned, but its value is never used. Yeah, I know. Fine, we'll start the thread too. This is probably a terrible idea, um, considering that. You know what? Um, yeah. Here, this will test our threading ability. I know I can get really, really easily distracted, but I'm just. Huh. So threading works. I'm somewhat surprised. Uh, I wonder if this is new. Or, oh, you know what I bet it is. I bet it isn't supported in certain platforms. So I bet threading works just fine on a PC build. But I bet if I went to WebGL, it would just crap out on me. Granted, I don't think I'm going to make this game work in WebGL probably. But yeah, I like to keep my options open. Is the car manual transmission? Yep. You cannot get a TR6 that is an automatic, I'll tell you that much. Uh, a lot of its stuff is... Um, a lot of its stuff is original. It's still original engine, original body, obviously. Um, I had to have the radiator rebuilt somewhat recently, so that's not original anymore. I also redid all of the interior very recently, so you'll note that... Is it, uh, oh, no, that's the old interior. Uh, the interior looks all right, but you can see one of the, the headrests is actually bowed a little bit on the top. And that's because those were the originals. And when I got the car, it's a 76, right? So if we calculate just how old that thing is, um, it's not only older than me. The thing's 39 years old. Um, after 39 years, the foam inside, inside of a headrest tends to just disintegrate. And when it's gone, well, you get a flat top or a, a bowed top in your headrests. Um, Flea Bomb, I did not pay extra for the overdrive. Uh, this does not have the overdrive in it. And when I talk to my mechanic, who is used to old English cars, um, he said it's actually not worth it to do the work because the electricals make it really difficult because it's not just an overdrive that you drop in it has a bunch of extra electrical work that needs to happen on it and so it's just not worth it it's honestly probably better for me to wait until the transmission dies and then dump something like a mazda's transmission into it drop an ls1 into it What's an LS1? Honestly, so I you'll find that my, my car knowledge is really iffy. Some stuff I'll know a ton about, and then there's some stuff that's eh. But yeah, anyway, it's a lovely car. I absolutely adore driving it. Uh, it's one of those things where it's it takes the act of driving, which I usually am not a huge fan of, and it makes it fun and interesting and exciting. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It, it's kind of a hobby. It's a constant hobby because that thing always requires more work. <laughs> it never is quite satisfied with, uh, holy crap. There's a lot of current health and energy on these guys. I guess I did that. <laughs> Excuse me. One sec. Sorry. Income.
All right, we'll see if that does it. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to mute the dog. Uh, I've tossed, I've got the dog sitting next to me. We'll see if that works. If that doesn't work, I'll just toss him out. Um, but yeah, whoa, phone. All right, so let's see. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can hear the corgi whine of, I wanna bark at it. Yeah, no dog, I'm not letting you. All right, so we've got our characters. Let's get some UI in place because honestly, we're now at the point where without the UI, we just can't tell the information even exists. Um, when I say toss out the dog, I mean the backyard. Sheesh, guys, come on. Uh, all right, so we're gonna put down a canvas. Canvases always come with event systems. That is the nature of it. Um, let's see here, Unity, da 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 da. Okay, cool. So. That's very good, there we go. He's being nice and quiet for me now. So, um, let's see, Unity, or Unity, UI. I, all these U words, right? I don't know if you guys can actually even hear the uh, the puppy in the back. It's a little difficult, but uh, you might be able to. I do have a pretty nice friggin' microphone. You can definitely hear the dog in the foreground. Apollo is being a pain. Here, one sec, let me grab him. Come here. Oh. Ugh, puppy. There we go. Guys, this is Apollo. Apollo is a corgi. And he's being a loud son of a gun right now. <laughs> he probably doesn't like the sound of the, uh, the puppy in the next room crying. Yeah, except... Exactly. This guy, he is my uh, my pair programming partner. He sits here, looks at code, and makes sure that I write it right, write it correctly. Um, you're okay, little buddy. You can see his ears flick upwards when the puppy barks or makes noise in the room. Anyway, I'm gonna actually put him in the backyard so he stops distracting me. And so that we can actually get to work. I don't know why I keep putting my headphones in. I don't need these. Why are they, why do I have them? Ooh, come here. Out you go. You go that hill. So you get to go out. Alright. I hope he's not whimpering at the code either. Although, as a pair programmer, that probably would be why he is. So okay, uh, images. Images are a good way to start. Also, uh, probably slider bars and scroll bars are another good way that we can control this stuff. Uh, yes, he is adorable. That gets him out of all kinds of trouble. Uh, let's see here. So, actually I have to zoom way the heck out to do any kind of UI work because Unity loves to create what, look, I mean, look at the size of this thing. The thing is monstrous. Um, and it's mostly monstrous because, I mean, this is how they put UI on the screen. They do this uh, overlay tactic, but because it has to be pixel perfect usually, or they want it to be a certain size, it ends up being this monstrous thing. Uh, and I actually don't know if a slider is actually the right thing. I need to think about this once more before I put this into place. Uh, scroll bar, oh yeah, scroll bar, not slider. Uh, scroll bar is easier to use. You'll note that the size is manipulatable. And what I tend to do is I just turn off its uh, interactivity and use it as a health bar or a loading bar or whatever I need it for. It makes life a little bit easier. And now Apollo is barking outside. Lovely. Some days you just can't win with dogs. Uh, and let's flip this thing upwards. I don't like having it actually be, uh, we'll say it goes bottom to top, right? So as the value goes from zero to full, you'll note how it's moving upwards. So somebody at full health will have a nice high bar. Uh, now granted, we actually don't want that to be the case. We want it to be size based, not value. So as this at full health, there's full bar. And then you can see that as the health drops, it'll drop down to close to zero. The one downside is you can't get this thing to actually go further than a certain size, which is unfortunate. So you can use, yeah, you can definitely use scroll bar for loading things as well. Uh, it's a great way to 
uh, essentially simulate something that needs to change over a certain amount of time. Uh, it gives the player some idea of what's going on in the background. Uh, let's see here. So we've got size. I've got all that handled. Just want to make sure there's nothing extra kind of clinging to this. Uh, if we have any extra objects that are unnecessary or anything we don't want, then we definitely want to take care of that now. But it looks like this scroll bar is in pretty good shape. So let's, aside from its size, that's the only thing left that I'm really not a fan of, is we need to be able to fit, I'd say, at least four, if not maybe six characters on the screen. Um, I'm going to start with four for now. And we'll see how it goes. Whoop, grab the wrong one. And I'm still grabbing the wrong one. Come on. This. You know what? Let's just flip to 2D mode. Oh, also, why did it flip this thing around when I said 2D? Look at that. You'll know it's doing a, a 3D flip and putting it on the wrong side of the screen. Because when I hit start, no, it actually is on the right side of the screen. I just am backwards. Oops. All right, well, let's fix that. That is my bad. Uh, let's. All right, so there. And if it's health, we have to make it red, right? That's always what health is. Health is just always a red-ish color. Uh, and if we really want to get nitpicky, we can add a component to it later that just changes the color to the new, um, to a different value based on its height. So as it, it'll start bright red and then dim down to like magenta and then black. Uh, and that should kind of handle it. So let's see, uh, we've got our health and I need to name this so that I know what it is, is my health bar. And I'm gonna need to make copies of this, but I can handle that. So we have health bar one, uh, or health bar, we have our energy bar, and I'm gonna make this two words. Let's just be consistent here. Health bar and energy bar, yay. And is there anything else? Probably character name is also something that's somewhat meaningful. Let's actually get this out here though, so you can see it. Is that good? That's distance enough. And energy, I don't know. Energy, let's make it, I mean, we could go primary colors, right? We could say red, yellow, and blue. Because you're, I, I assume, mana is just like universally blue, right? I would blow people's minds and probably piss people off if I made uh, energy blue and mana yellow, or if I made health blue uh, and, you know, anytime you change these colors, these colors exist for a reason and they help player comprehension. So that's actually usually a really good idea to just leave them alone. Um, there are times to rock the boat, this is not one of them when it comes to uh, this kind of information. So let's see, middle justify some text, maybe make it, uh, can I bold it to make it readable? I'm just trying to make this little piece of text readable so that I can shift it to the right spot and be done with it. Um, it does not definitely need to be that big. There we go. That looks like a decent piece of text. Yeah, yellow or green for energy. Uh, it's just kind of one of those things where it's, uh, that one is not a known trope. So we can mess with it and play with it to our heart's content. The moment we get into something uh, a little bigger than that, the moment it's something like health where people have this like, this, idea of what it should be naturally, that's when we don't mess with it. Um, okay, and I've got character name. Where's wrap, uh, word wrap should be here somewhere. And I'm completely horizontal overflow. Okay, I'm just gonna... That's funny. Oh, okay. I, I can overflow the height as well. Although I technically shouldn't want to do that either. Let's see, maybe if I make this a little taller. There we go, there's our second line of text. So there's our character name and here's some stats. 
uh, and eventually just for the sake of having something here. Let's also grab, uh, I tend to keep a scratch folder separate from my game assets. Scratch is essentially ideas and things that I like. Uh, placeholders end up in here, sketches end up in here. Uh, I've managed to recently grab uh, a bunch of portraits that look pretty neat. Uh, they're nothing to, to write home about, but they're also good enough that they get the point across of what I'm trying to do. And no, they are not the art style I like, but they are still um, part of the... Uh, they just they hold the concept very well, even if some of them are friggin' Daft Punk members. Um, I mean, I could make one a friggin' bear if I wanted. That'd be great. Uh, let's see, size, what is the size on these? 160 by 120? Uh, let's go with the high-res ones, just for now. Uh, let's grab, I don't know, let's say our, oh, nice, they have zombies. That's lovely. I like the zombies. <laughs> to those of you about to go to sleep, I'm sorry. <laughs> but zombies are kind of cool. At least some of the zombie art here. Uh, let's see, pirates, pirates. I'm looking for a warrior. So why don't we just go with Manimal? That's not weird at all. Not at all. I kind of like the pig person, though. Although that just looks like a pig with shoulders. So I don't know if I'd call that uh, like correct or not. Uh, let's grab who looks warrior-y here. I mean, that first guy, I guess, he looks fairly warrior-ish. So let's grab him. Project textures uh, for now, yeah. I'll just toss the textures in here because I'm feeling cheap. We can always redo it and clean up later. Canvas. Because this is just, even though it's mostly mock-up, we want to have a good idea of how this is going to look. And if we do this incorrectly, it'll mess with how this will look. Um, interesting. I wonder if there's some way to... Uh, to get the size to actually match a one-to-one -one instead of being this like weird texture. Oh, this is a square texture. Okay, I should make this a square texture then. He looks a little wide, honestly, and that's kind of funny looking to me. Um, also, the other thing I'm noting, I'm not sure I like his portrait being on the inside. I kind of think it should be portrait and then health bars. So let's fix that. And he shouldn't be completely cornered, but we can deal with a lot of these details later. Uh, for now, it's just a matter of, hey, look, we've got a character, right? Simple stuff. Character name, portrait, health, mana. None of this is obviously tied to anything yet, but we can clean that up and fix that as well. Um, let's see. Let's just create an empty object. We'll just call this uh, character portrait. And we'll just throw all this information underneath it for simplicity's sake, so that when I look at the canvas, I will understand um, what parts of the canvas fit where, so that we can have an idea of, oh, OK, this is his name. This is his portrait. This is each of the pieces will make sense. Uh, I like to name things correctly as well for that exact same reason. Portrait. There we go. All right. Uh, character portrait and health energy. So we have the model in place, or the view, I guess I should say. This isn't a model. This is a view. We have the model, which is the information. We have the view, which is the uh, the the display representation of the model. Now we just need to tie the two together with a controller to essentially say, hey, look, here's the information inside of this. I need to update it. And that's probably going to fall within the purview of a player character. So this is not a derived stat. This is a reference. Uh, and we're going to just give it the game object. And this is going to be the, um, I'll call this the UI root for now. I might come up with a better name for it. Um, portrait root, stats root, UI. Now I'll keep a UI root. UI root is a good, simple 
uh, thing and I can go deal with it from there. So we've got a character. Uh, where did I put the party? Oh, here's the party. Uh, I'm actually going to turn off the player characters I'm not using quite yet. Even though I entered the information, I still want to hang off on using them quite yet. So here's our UI route. Uh, what we want to do is inside the player character, we want to, and I know I'm going to want to do this in multiple places, so I'm going to make a helper function out of this. And I'm just going to call it update uh, UI. I, I can't come up with a better thing. I'll probably end up renaming a lot of this later because uh, very vague terms like this tend to be a little bit painful. Um, but what I'm going to do uh, is we're going to set all this information. So, for example, we know the character's name is in an object called name that is a child object of the character portrait. And as we know, the party, this guy, from the party, this guy has the character portrait in tow. So he already knows where that is. So let's see here. We say UI root find child or get child. Oh, it's transformed by get child, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, oh, get child needs an index. Can I find? Find child. There we go. Name. Now that's simple enough. We know that name has a text element which we need to, if we want to ever interact with Unity's uh, UI, we need to use their namespace. Otherwise, we'll completely miss the point. And then we're going to set the text equal to the character name. Simple enough, right? So now I hit start. Oh, we need to actually call the function, don't we? So now I hit start, and we should see his name update to warrior, which is great. This does the job of what we're hunting for, and uh, it does so in such a way that it's not invasive. Uh, it is very one-sided, so the UI can never tell the game anything currently, at least not without more components being attached. But the, the player character can go out to the UI and say, by the way, my new health is this. By the way, my new energy is this. Um, and it can update it. And I'm actually going to go so far as to say uh, this is a context menu uh, as a function to, yes. Uh, so now what I can do, and this is an interesting thing, um, let's do the rest of the, the information update here. So transform dot find child. What's the next one? Um, let's go with health bar. And the scary thing here is that you can't actually change any of this. So if I change names of things, that's when uh, this is going to get a little iffy. But with health bar, I know I have a scroll bar element attached. And I can say, OK, our scroll bar has a size value, which is a floating point number. And what I want to do is let's see here. Uh, the size is going to be equal to the current health over the max health. And the only thing we have to do here to make sure that this doesn't uh, turn into uh, a zero or one case with the size because it is a floating point number but current health and max health are both integers and you have to remember if you divide integers by each other you don't get a uh, you don't get a floating point number that's just not how the result works you divide integers together you get an integer even if truncation happens because of it so okay we've got our maximum health getting set and I think I called it the energy bar I want to make sure but I think I did and this should be kind of the same deal here right scroll bar size is equal to the current energy over the max energy 
And so these should both fill up all the way the moment the game starts. Great. Uh, let's go through to the party and find the player we're manipulating. And say I set, I drop his health a little bit and then proceed to update the UI. You'll note that his health actually drops. Um, and so this is you know, really, really convenient for us. Uh, each time we go through, we update the UI. Oh look, his health dropped. It's not a one-to-one. -one. It doesn't immediately update each time I make changes like this. But what it does do for us is that it allows us to now uh, see the changes and the player character can control those changes. So it won't happen every frame. It won't burn unnecessary um, It won't burn up unnecessary uh, CPU time, but it will go so far as to update it when we tell it to, which is what we're looking for. All right. Does it? That's kind of hilarious. Oh uh, well, how it goes. All right, so we've got our UI, we've got our setup here. Uh, I'm trying to think of it, if there's anything else that I would want to put in here. But honestly, aside from duplicating this a couple times, I think I've hit a good a good holding pattern here. Actually, you know what? There's one more piece of information I want now that I'm thinking about it. Let's first off, I want to increase this a little bit in size. Uh, grab these, let's shift them over a little bit more and get this to shift over a bit as well. Uh, what I want to do here, let's pull character name under the portrait and I want to see if I can actually make these wide enough to have some text underneath it. It will be very tiny text and it'll be really difficult but um, let's see if I can do this easily. So this won't be named, this will be HP um, yeah, I'll just go with basic, simple, stupid names for now. And we'll say its size is going to be pretty friggin' tiny. Because this shouldn't be more than, I don't know, it, sh it definitely should not be more than three characters wide. Um, yeah, I mean, that's all it should need to be. So let's do that. Oop, alright. 32 in size. Um, oh gosh, um, you know what, I'm going to call it the energy, uh, let's see, current energy, current health, just so that these are obvious again. Uh, whenever we can, I am happy to have things energy, there's a G there, don't mind that. Um, Sorry, I keep glancing to, to chat, reading things, and then coming back and completely forgetting what my frame of mind was. Uh, essentially, what I'm trying to do here is just make sure that everything here is incredibly readable, as if there were going to be another programmer on the team. Because what I might do is I might set this all up, and then I'll come back to it, uh, you know, days or however long later, and I'll completely forget the work I've done. And unless it's really obvious to me, uh, I will forget in a heartbeat just what is going on in here. So I've got two more updates I want to do inside here. Uh, so we've got my current, actually shouldn't just paste twice. So current health is a thing. Uh, and that's not a scroll bar, that's text. Whose actual readable text should be along the lines of... Um, Let's see here, what should the actual readable text be? Oh, right. Current health to string. And we'll just copy and paste that for energy. Sweet. That should kind of be all I need. 
do one final test, make sure this works as expected. Cool. Uh, yeah, honestly, what you guys are saying in chat makes total sense, and I would be happy if, you know, he get if this game gets to a point where it should be on, uh, like, you know, green light or whatever, yeah, I'd love to have people review it, but if you look at the state of the game, this is what's in a scene. Like, that, this is all there is to it. There is very, very little to this game. So, it's kind of funny for people to be spamming about, Oh, I'd love to play your game. Well, why don't you wait till it's done? I'll get there. You gotta be a little patient. Anyway. Cool. So, progress. Lots of good progress and maintainable progress. Um, guys, if you have any questions, feel free. Let me know. Um... Just realized I have to flip this around actually. There we go. I love how I have this like giant UI piece and then this tiny, tiny little bit of terrain right here. Teensy, teensy, tiny. Oh well. Um, Yeah, right now it just says character name. It is meant to be name. I just named him Warrior because I'm lazy. All right, so uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free, throw them my way. I'm gonna do a little copy and paste action here uh, because we can have more than one character portrait. And what I would like to do here is tie these other character portraits into the other characters. So we have our warrior, now we're going to drag our rogue across, give him a UI route to deal with, and we just have to do a little modification Whee! to this in order to make it a feasible piece of uh, UI. So I'm going to switch the order of this, drag this back across, maybe we'll pull in a different portrait because it feels a little silly to have the same portrait for... all of our pieces of information. Uh, let's see, this reads current health. Current health should go right there. Character name should go there. And current energy, there we go. Uh, do I know any good Unity tutorials besides the ones on the current site? Oof, uh, unfortunately I don't. Uh, I'm really, really happy to do self-learning. So when it comes to my own experiences with uh, how I code a lot of these things, it's mostly a lot of trial and error and trying this stuff out myself, which unfortunately is not terribly helpful to you guys because uh, it then just kind of makes it even more difficult for you guys to learn stuff if I'm doing things in a silly way. Um, did I not... Oh, I see what I did. Interesting. I'll have to fight with this later. Uh, something I just noticed, my character portrait, if you look at the root object, it's this square in the center of the screen. Um, but then if you look at uh, where the object itself is, the two don't fall into line quite correctly. And what I should honestly do, actually, you know what, let's not be lazy about that right now, because this could bite us in the ass later, and I really want that to not be the case. Um, so I'm actually going to go so far as to even delete the other, eh, let's not delete the other one yet. Um, first thing, let's grab everything underneath it, pull it all down to what is approximately center, which of course I fail at. Um, and then the other thing is, let's expand this to actually fit all of our moving pieces. Because someday we may want to change the resolution of our game, say. And when we do, we want to make sure that our UI elements are sized up correctly. Because otherwise, if they aren't, it's going to cause us a lot of pain later on. 
closer. Okay, I'm gonna shift this a little further to the right. Okay, that's pretty friggin' close. Uh, I'm gonna call it good enough after this last little shift where I'm trying to line up. You can kind of see the X in the circle in the center are difficult to line up. But now the nice thing is the character portrait itself is one piece. And inside of this one piece uh, is where everything should kind of live. So now if I make a copy of it, it's I can actually just shift the entire, uh, whoops, I don't wanna shift that part. I can just shift the entirety of the root and everything else moves with it. Berserk, Arcade, and Hack and Slash, huh? I'll have to look those up too. I'm really curious. I'm always out on the hunt for, um, you know, interesting tutorials, people who make this, uh, you know, game design thing a little more exciting and interesting than your kind of run-of-the-mill base person who says, yeah, it's interesting, I'm just gonna make something and let my viewers along for the ride. Uh, I tend to be a little more excited by people who kind of go out of their way to make uh, the game design aspect uh, exciting. So 240 by 180. Uh, and I'm just going to, once again, you can note, you know, two things are all kinds of off course. So we just need to nab the bits and pieces, pull them vaguely into center. I can do a little better, it looks like. But first, let's shift our portrait up to here. You're at 124? Cool, I can be at 124 too. And then we just have to line everything up. So that's, okay, he's down and to the right, so we'll just shift this up. And then some, does that look good? That actually looks pretty freaking good. All right, neat, almost done. Brackies has some good YouTube tutorials, sweet. The more resources you guys toss in chat, the more reading material or watching material, I guess I should call it, the more watching material I have as well. All right, and just to double check, so here's our warrior portrait, that's the first one. Um, and I'm actually, let's name these. Uh, upper left character portraits. You are the upper right character portrait. The lower left. And you aren't lower yet, but you will be in a moment. You are the lower right character portrait. What is your Y? Your Y is 15. Oh, wait, no, that's incorrect. 124, negative 124. Lower right, negative 124, sweet. And so now you can see we've got an architecture in place that allows for all of this. And it's really nice that all we have to do is when we run start, you can actually, whoop, it looks like somebody wasn't activated when I started the party. Uh, oh, okay. so. But this is a good point to make. So, okay, look, you've got Warrior. We've got the Rogue, which is turned off, so he didn't set any of his information. If we actually turn him on, you'll see him set his information immediately. And then we've got Cleric and Mage. They all have different stats. They all have different names. Their portrait images are different. We can deal with that and fight with it later. Um, but still, the point is made that this is a fairly good process for at least us to generate some good information on the screen. Uh, I do kind of wish I had a larger monitor because the thing you guys might be noticing is how cramped vertically all of my UI is uh, because I'm in free aspect. If I actually went to something like a 16 by nine, this is what somebody's actual screen in a widescreen format will look like. And I need to adjust my UI to match. Um, getting UI to be Resolution agnostic is a giant pain in the butt and it's always worth doing. You should never really ignore that as a uh, possibility. But for now, free aspect is fine. I just need to fight with the aspect ratios later. What programs am I using? I'm currently using Unity 
and uh, Visual Studio. Uh, I'm not 100% on Visual Studio all the time, but I do tend to like it usually. It just does some funny things with line endings and complains a lot about other things that I can fix w given that I take the time to change the preferences. Um, Bergzer tutorials were made in Unity 3. That's unfortunate. Unity 3 and Unity 5 are very, very different beasts. Um, we'll see. I, I'll be really curious to see the differences. I know uh, they had a lot more um, a lot more garbage variables floating around that were meant to be helpers but honestly probably caused more trouble than they were worth in the time. Uh, I, I like the improvements that have come with Unity 5. I think it's a major step forwards in terms of clean code usage. Um, great, now I can make new web browsers nub web browsers in unity okay you can make a web browser in unity it's not terribly difficult uh, you can use the www class and that is a really easy way to interact with the outside world using a basic web interface in fact if you were to use a rest api i would say using that web class is the best way to go uh, because inside unity it breaks down to uh, i think in uh, what is it, an XML HTTP request or something like that, where it basically breaks down into a very simple web request call that you can then get bytes from and deserialize the bytes into an image, or you can do something like text and, you know, display images on the screen. So yeah, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, for those of you who are just stopping in and wondering what the heck I'm doing, I am working on getting myself into a position where I have a first person dungeon crawling game in front of me. You can see I have kind of some of the basics in place. Um, I really need to turn that rogue on, otherwise he's just going to sit here and continue to ignore me. Um, there we go. So you can see I've got characters in place, very, very basic characters as well. There's no items, there's no modifications, nothing matters quite there yet. Um, but I've also got basic movement. You can see it's gridded movement. So as I take a step, it literally snaps to the next position. So maybe next time on stream, I'll do something along the lines of some easing just so that the world is not quite as uh, twitchy when I move about. Um, but yeah, aside from that, this is actually looking pretty good. I'm uh, impressed with the amount of progress I was able to make today. Um, yeah trying to think of anything else that I want to get done today but honestly everything else I have in my queue is a pretty big task and I don't have the time to chug through it right now but uh, I will say thank you guys again for joining me it has been fun uh, if you are interested in what I'm doing or if you like what I'm seeing what I'm doing and you want to see more there is a follow button below and I would love it if you would hit that button for me I'm working my way towards that thousand follower point. Uh, last I saw, I was at 760, I think. Um, and I would love to push my way, make more progress towards that 1000 point. Uh, if you do hit the follow button, you'll see me each time I come online, and or you'll get an email at least. Uh, and then eventually, uh, I'll start putting the recorded videos of my work online so that you guys can then see um, all the work that I do. Um, do I do 3D design? Uh, eventually I will have to. A lot of this game has 3D elements inside of it. And I'm going to uh, at least try and put together uh, some kind of 3D art on my own before I dive into the market of purchasing things. Because being able to make my own 3D art is something I'm going to have to do eventually. So yeah, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, hopefully, I will see you uh, all next time when I sign on. Uh, Raise Fatness, I do not work for hire. Uh, I have a full-time job, and it's difficult enough to do my hobby programming, which is this stream, and uh, also do paid work on top of the full-time position. Um, so yeah, unfortunately not at this time. Thanks guys for joining me. Hopefully, I'll see you next time. In the meantime, have a good night, morning, evening, however and wherever I caught you guys. Have a good day. Later.